Hello there, Common Wolf Rom here. Zelda has been delayed to Spring 2023, we have no idea what is going on with Splatoon 3, while Chad in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is now having the by far shortest new mainline game reveal to release cycle beside the Giga Chad, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. So be sure to leave a like and subscribe as we are less than 3000 away from 300,000 and with it our Switch OLED Plus game giveaway. Friday July 29th, the day we get the release of the biggest game on Nintendo Switch this year. Not by sales numbers, as it will be easily beaten by both Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and Splatoon 3, but by its length and, well, depth. A 100 plus hour long Xenoblade Chronicles 3 adventure, with 7 unique playable party members at the same time, where 6 of them can interlink to fight as mechs in a traditional 3 party members formation. And not only that, but also with interchangeable classes so you can combine to your heart's content. There's so much to think on Liftsoft for here in a game which is all about life and the path to sword match according to the official press release. But the one thing we have to think most of is releasing the follow up to a big 2017 classic so early that it is coming up before Breath of the Wild 2, before the next 3D Mario game after Odyssey and what now seems to be before Splatoon 3. All thanks to a historic earlier release than announced in the reveal trailer from September to July 29th. Keep in mind that we have not seen a similar Chad move for a Nintendo published game in all regions since Majora's Mask 3D on the 3DS in 2015. In that case, the game came out in February instead of the previously announced spring. But then again, that was a remake, not a brand new installment, and it launched on the same day as the more powerful new 3DS in the West. Makes me wonder if a certain different game slated for Spring 2023 might come out before actual spring begins and with a new more powerful model. Hint hint. But wait, Splatoon 3 is coming out this summer, right? Yes it does, since September 9th is well incited by another 12 days. Summer begins on June 21st and ends on September 21st. And we already have the ambitious Fire Emblem Warriors 3 hopes on June 24th and before that, and in effect before summer, we get Mario Strikers Battle League Football on June 10th. Add to that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 on July 29th and you already have June and July more than covered. Which means that Splatoon 3 definitely needed more time until September 9th as Nintendo doesn't change release dates unless there's a necessity for it. Instead, we only see one possibility, namely that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 replaced Splatoon 3 which was originally planned for a July release but which clearly needs a little more time. And this is more than a mere possibility but actually how things stand right now. Since with this release change, it is clear that nearly every game planned to be released in 2022 by Nintendo in January 2022 has either 1. been delayed to 2023, switched release order or gotten a release where games sell the best. The last one obviously ties to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which seems more and more likely to be a November release just like the prior new generation Pokemon titles. Meaning that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 will be followed by a non-Nintendo developer release or smaller Nintendo release in August, Splatoon 3 on Friday, September 9th. Possibly Bayonetta 3, a third party exclusive for Halloween in October, no delay, and Pokemon Gen 9, Scarlet and Violet in November for the holiday season. It seems more and more likely that this is the new lineup and release order that we are dealing with in 2022. And to be honest, I believe it is an upgrade after what happened to Zelda. Especially for Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which is now granted a big gap between its July 29th release before the next major Nintendo release, which as Nintendo themselves have now confirmed is Splatoon 3 on Friday, September 9th. A massive 100 plus hour long RPG before an online shooter title. It couldn't be better for Monolithsoft, as with this end of July release, there would most likely be a near 4 month long gap to the open world of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In other words, it means that the game will be completely free to dominate this summer, all because the bigger sellers are coming months after it and are unable to overshadow this British voice acted mega project in every conceivable way. Gameplay, story, characters, you name it. In fact, this entire castling Xenoblade and Splatoon chess move might also explain why Breath of the Wild 2, outside of possible hardware plans, is now set for a spring 2023 release, since it fits with a different point that we have ignored up to now. That with it, there will be an around 4 month gap between each of the big map slash open world adventure releases. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 in July, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in November and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 in Spring 2023. It makes perfect sense and with Splatoon 3 and possibly Bayonetta 3 in between Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and open world Pokemon Gen 9, I believe we have the perfect lineup. The only thing missing is the August game which could still be Ubisoft Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. 
It might. More reports have indicated that the game might not be ready by then, and even risk a delay. For December is a possibility, but also summer 2023. And with this possible delay, do you see this perfectly set release order? Absolutely, and it benefits every fan, developer and Nintendo as publisher of nearly all of the games we have referenced. But why was Splatoon 3 delayed to Friday, September 9th? One is the release order, but the more meaningful reply is that the game is far more ambitious than Splatoon 2 with a beefy single player campaign, the return of the mammalians, an expanded salmon mode and online play. And understandingly so, those might require a little more time to be ready without any issues. That explains a possible push. But is Xenoblade Chronicles 3 even ready this early in summer? The answer is yes. They simply don't fail to deliver by or before planned release windows and step up whenever Nintendo needs extra time or even help for any of their own ambitious developments. Yes, Splatoon has been released in either May with Splatoon or July with Splatoon 2 in the past. But when one game is ready for July and the other isn't, then there is nothing to discuss here. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is coming out before Splatoon 3 in order to fill the void that is left by the latter when it cannot be released exactly 5 years after Splatoon 2. It is clear that Nintendo has decided that the release first and finish later mentality that we saw with ARMS in 2017 and Mario Golf Super Rush in 2021 is a thing of the past and that 2022 marks the year that they want their games to shine at launch. Well except for Nintendo Switch Sports which is not adding golf into the game until August. In other words, other than missing golf content at launch, it is clear that Nintendo means business in the second half of 2022 and first half of 2023. The games they will be releasing within the 9 months between July 2022 and April 2023 will be truly historic and filled with brand new games of quality that is pushing the boundary for each of the respective franchises. The latest gameplay and story sequences of Xenoblade Chronicles 3 confirm that. And we have already seen the ambition of the single player and salmon run in Splatoon 3, Pokemon, which is finally after over 25 years making the full jump to open world, all before Zelda will once again redefine the action adventure genre in spring 2023. The first half of 2022 is no doubt good, as we already have games with scores in the high 80s and even touching the 90s score. And we still have solid sports games and a brand new Fire Emblem Warriors game inbound in June. But what really matters is the second half as there is a completely different level of ambition from the titles beginning that month. Games that will show that yes, the best is yet to come. And it will be kicked off with a gigantic masterpiece and continue with this trend into spring 2023 for Nintendo's most important sequel of all time. Games that will retire the class of 2017 minus Super Mario Odyssey since at least for now there is no new 3D Mario on the horizon. The change of the release order of two games is making this year even stronger and properly distributing the releases so that we gamers have time to play them all and also get some variety between the upcoming three gigantic open world adventures that await. And that is not even counting the more open than ever Sonic Frontiers. Coming holiday 2022, all in this year of open world games on the Switch, which we already got a taste of in January with Legends Arceus. A game that will simply be overshadowed by this legendary lineup. Other than that, there isn't much more to say or add. Nintendo is probably delaying Splatoon 3 slightly for development reasons, that is to say finish the game. Though by doing so, they have made the release order of the second half of 2022 and the first half of 2023 even more balanced. In one of the best 12 Nintendo Switch months ever, with Xenoblade Chronicles on July 29th, Splatoon 3 more likely now than ever in September, open world Pokemon in November and free layered Zelda in spring 2023 potentially with some type of new hardware or model for the last one of these. And after that, we still have Retro Studios Metroid Prime 4, which could come out somewhere on that 2023 horizon. I can definitely drink to that, and now I just need to know what you think of Sunday Chronicles 3 replacing Splatoon 3 in July. Is it a strike of genius by Nintendo, or a necessary step to avoid a too big gap this summer? Sound off in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, be sure to share this video and leave a like and subscribe and press the notification bell all to not miss any of upcoming videos in the legendary 12 Nintendo months to come after this upload and to get us past 300,000 subscribers before my 30th birthday on June 13th. Less than 3,000 left to go for that and our Switch OLED plus game giveaway. Last but definitely not least, a big thanks to you for watching and to all our patreon.com slash patrons and in particular our role producer Charles Shush. You rock and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.